I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company. And today I'm thrilled to be joined by Siobhan Cullen to talk all about the Netflix series Bodkin. And, and starting off, you know, when we first meet Dove, she's in such a tumultuous place in her life where everything in her career is so tenuous, but it feels like this also really passes over into her personal life and, and a lot of the things that she's going through internally in her relationship with herself. And so I was interested in, you know, when you meet a character that's at that sort of crossroads in their lives, how you set about finding what that was going to look like for her specifically and how she was going to respond to all of this yeah it's a really good question I think it's what's so interesting about Dove is that when we meet her you see you see the initial trigger for her which I think is really useful for then carrying on to kind of get to know Dove and why she's at where she's at why she behaves the way she behaves but everything that follows then um it's kind of meant to be a solution, sending her away to Ireland, kind of removing her from the the madness of it all is actually all just kind of layering. It's sort of like trigger layering. It's making it worse and worse and worse. And she's faced with all of these things that she's been kind of burying and pushing down for for a long time. So it was really interesting to kind of explore how each one of those pressure points affects her and breaks her or or not breaks her maybe even hardens her I think initially it's it's in the in the first few episodes it's you see her kind of building more and more walls her walls kind of get thicker and then I suppose as the series goes on then they begin to crack and crumble and fall and everything that she sort of held on to as true her kind of pillars of self kind of just vanish I, lo I love that description as well of, you know, we do see her like kind of harden a little bit more, loosen yeah. a little bit more. Um, and what's great is it it feels very non-linear. It's not, okay, all of a sudden all my walls come down or all of a sudden they come up. It's it's a constant push and pull with her. And did you find that the writing and the script or kind of like how did you find that flow of where you felt like she would tense up a little bit more and where she would become a little bit looser as a character? Yeah, I think that's what's so brilliant about um, Jez's Jez Sharf, our writer, his, his script is that, I mean, so much, it's just there on the page and it's really, um, it, if, for me, actually, what I kind of had to shake was my, um, my impulses or my inclination to make her a likable character. I think I'm, we're so primed, I think maybe as females as well, even more so, to make our characters likable and they don't have to be, they don't have to always be. Of course you wanna be rooting for your characters, but it's okay to, to meet tricky people and to be watching a story that involves a complicated person who's making bad choices. And once you're allowed in as to, as to understand why they're doing that. So I tried as much as possible to examine why I wanted to do that, why my impulses were, well, I need to, I need to make that nicer. I need to, and, and to be like, actually, no, when we meet her, she's in a horrible place. She's being a bitch and, and that's okay. And to lean into that and then, and then trust that the story would, would take us to where we need to be. And for, for, for those kind of removal of layers to, to make it kind of understandable. Absolutely. And was was there something that was quite interesting about getting to find and explore the characteristics of her that are quite stoic, you know, because she's very good at kind of like putting up her guardrails and kind of presenting herself in a way where she doesn't want people to be able to read her and to be able to see her emotions and what she's thinking. Like even the scenes where she was like intentionally wearing sunglasses around town, yeah. even though it's not sunny at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I suppose there's a, there's a, a challenge and a gift in that as well is that, um, you you don't want to be boring you don't want to give a a boring or one note performance but um when your character is actively putting up those walls you have to find ways to also let the audience in and and let your scene partners and your your you know, your colleagues in as well so um that was a really cool thing for me i think to to play with and yeah i mean we have it literally in the physical sense of the sunglasses um so yeah, she presented lots of challenges to me and I think that's why I suppose I loved playing it so much and why she she really kind of attracted me. I, I love as well that at the beginning, she's like, making a podcast is a ridiculous concept. It's going to make no difference in the world. And then when she suddenly realizes 
there is there is something here like there is a story there is something worthwhile and particularly once she finds the car with the bodies in it it kind of changes everything with her trajectory and you know I I, I love how laser focused she is um how much were you kind of leaning into like the backstory elements of the way that she's really had to build and graft for every single thing that she's ever had and particularly yeah. when you look at kind of journalism and the time period in which she was building her career as well yeah and that's exactly it is that I, I think as well why she brushes up against Emmy so much is that she sees someone who, to the outward eye, ha, 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 this job has been given to her and she sailed through life and she's probably from a wealthy family and her dad has probably given her this job. And that's, I think, where a lot of those kind of frustrations Dove has with Emmy lies and she doesn't see that there's uh, there's no hunger in her, she doesn't think, or she's not willing to do enough to get it the same way that Dove had to fight and what she says um oh, there's a line about I had to I had to use my bare hands and and there's an amazing image about like her bloody fingernails or something um and I think that's it and that gives us such an insight into where she's come from and what exactly she's had to do to get to where she is um and yeah the kind of the sacrifices and losses along the way and I think overall as well, the the story and the scripts give so much richness in terms of her entire backstory and her upbringing. You know, when we learn about her mother's addiction and the fact that her mother kind of like left her at the convent and didn't come back for her and how she's felt because of that. Um, and I was just interested in how you kind of did a deep dive into all of her childhood history and her relationship with her mom to shape so much of her as well. Yeah, I, I had a whole history for Dove, but as we kind of learn, Dove isn't maybe the most reliable of narrators, not that she's lying, but that we all tell ourselves these stories. We tell ourselves these stories about ourselves to kind of justify our beliefs and our behaviors. And, you know, through that episode, um, episode five, six, pardon me, six, where she has this hallucinogenic trip and kind of her childhood is sort of revealed to her and um and we realize that maybe it's not the version of events that she's been telling herself maybe that's not the true the true story and um so yeah so I, I had to believe Dove had to believe that 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 what had happened to her was true but it's it's only through the the course of the season that we learned that you know, maybe maybe there was a different perspective and maybe everything she's held on to so far is, you know, slightly off. <laughs> and that episode that you just mentioned is such a great episode as well, because it feels like it gives you a completely different space to play within the character, because the way that she usually kind of tries to control everything is just completely disposed of in that moment. And so how is that a totally different space for you to kind of play around within Dove as a character? Yeah, I mean, it's so cool. It's such a gift to get to play um, uh, a scene like that or an episode like that or just explore an experience like that where you see a character in, especially Dove, who's so um, so curated and controlled and to have that totally stripped away from her is so cool to play as an actor. I think particularly, you know, we'd been probably shooting for... I don't know, maybe four months. So I'd been playing four months of of a uh, of that kind of like hell stuff. So to get to like you know lose all that, to lose control, literally was was really exciting. And th 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 there's like little. <laughs> There's other like little inklings of those moments where she does loosen up a little bit. One of my favorites is the night where she's at the bar and she's singing karaoke and it's kind of like, hey, look, you know, this is my thing and it is a comfort zone for me and I'm going to share something that I actually really enjoy. But I love the fact that when she puts in Zombie by the Cranberries that she ends up having to sing a completely different song. But she does. And so how did you set about figuring out what does Dove look like singing karaoke in a space <laughs> that she enjoys, but a song that isn't her choice? <laughs> yeah, that was a real, that was really, it was, yeah, really cool kind of conversations around that. Settling on a song that we thought was right was really exciting as well. Um, yeah, and putting her in a position that, as you said, she's volunteered to, but the, but the goalposts have shift, shifted. And so much of that, I think, is, again, 
she's there she, she she's she's panicking she's not willing at the start but then she kind of despite herself gets carried away and it's a really revealing moment I think I mean I think that's that song that she ends up singing she c- kind of gets lost in it and is singing it about her mom I think um and regardless of who's listening or what she just for a moment kind of reveals too much um but I think it's all part of this of her kind of getting to know herself um the whole season is sort of like a big therapy session I think for Dove really extreme one but um yeah she's I think doing a lot a lot of she's learning a lot about herself and doing a lot of of work (laughs) I also love the detail that as soon as she comes up off stage there's no reaction from anyone around like no one was paying attention to her aside from Mary did you think that that mattered to her at all or were you just like she's amazed it's funny you say that because we had another version where all the the people in the pub are listening and engaged. So we didn't know which way it was going to go. So I didn't know until I saw the final cut that that's the version we went with. So there is another version out there where the the Bodkin locals are blown away by her performance. <laughs> so um yeah I think what I think what they went for though is is the right one because it's not about anyone else it's about her in that moment I think and and her her trauma and her mother and everything it's also really interesting to see her in the space of you know what does it look like for her to open herself up a little bit romantically because even the first time that Mary starts kind of flirting with her a little bit the fact that she just like spits her drink and it's kind of like you see me that way like I don't see myself that way I don't see myself as a romantic interest in the world and I think it was interesting to kind of see what it is that it takes for her to open herself up and so how did you find those touch points of you know how does she kind of feel like she trusts this situation a little bit more yeah, and we talked about that a lot as well about, you know, Dove's romantic history and, um, you know, does she, has she had, does, yeah, does she have regular partners in London? Does, she, you know, what does that look for her, look like for her? And it's, yeah, I think she has so removed herself and it and become such a lone wolf, such a solo operator that unless she needs something from someone then i'm sure she'll she'll go out and get what she needs but if it's if it's someone else sort of initiating that and being kind when there's no apparent transaction when there's nothing that they need want from her it's it that's kind of dangerous territory i think for dove i don't think she knows how to handle that and we see how she kind of ends up dabbling is is because something is needed. She needs something inevitably for Mary. She needs a favor. So that's why she goes back to the her house and um and then kind of gently <laughs> explores what that might be. But it's all self-protection, I think, with Dove. It's again, yeah, those barriers and walls. It's it's such a great point that you bring up as well, the idea of kindness as a transaction for her. Um, And particularly when it comes to the dynamic with Gilbert and with Emmy, did you want there to be moments where she was being a little bit kinder in the earlier episodes where it was very much transactional for her versus later on where it starts to feel more genuine for her? Yeah, uh, you you can see, uh, well, what I tried to do in some I think you can see moments of it throughout the episodes of when Dove is really up against it, when she really needs something, even if it's like directions in the post office or um, in the convent when she's trying to find like where the nun's room is, she can switch it on. I think she is a people person. She knows how to do it. And even with, um, with Teddy, when she reveals that story about, you know, her best friend being a nun in the convent and, and then dismisses it later as bullshit. But I don't I don't think that is bullshit. I think that's, again, a, a self-preservation um, technique that she's she's realized she's revealed something and she's immediately closing that door. So, yeah, I think she she can when she needs something and when when it's useful for her, she can um, share and be kind and put a smiley face on and then. Yeah, close that window. 
And then on the flip side, it, you know, if she wants to kind of create a different dynamic, she's also perfectly comfortable clocking a guy in the nose and and kind of getting quite physical and standing (laughs) toe to toe. And, you know, was that quite a fun space to get to play within her of just that dynamic of it doesn't matter who it is that she's talking to. If she feels like it's a moment to level up the situation, she's going to be the first one to do it willingly. Absolutely. Yeah. She, um, she doesn't have a massive sense of um physical danger I think I don't think that's ever a huge concern for her um and be that because you know she's so hungry for what she needs she's like a she's you know she's on that hunt or or is it I don't know a lack of um a lack of care for herself and and if she could get hurt or whatever but uh, that was really exciting. Actually, loads of Dove's kind of um, physical stuff was really exciting to play. You know, I I got to do kind of lots of stunty stuff. She's often putting herself in the in the way, in the path of danger. So that was really kind of um, really fun to explore. I ended up in so many different bodies of water <laughs> um, and getting hit by a car. And yeah, so she is... I don't think she's just accident prone. I think she's comfortable putting herself in that position. I've I've heard you say specifically that you really, really loved the water work that you got to do, where it was like diving into a giant <laughs> vat of water yeah. filled with eels or when she goes into the lake and finds the car. <laughs> yes, I did. I loved that stuff. Um, it's just fun. And it also, it, I suppose, selfishly as well, when you're doing stuff that's that physical, it does the job for you. You're you're putting your body through the actual thing. So there's, you know, very little acting required. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, you're going through it in the same way the character's going through it. So if you're, you know, going into freezing cold, horrible water, that's what you're doing. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just fun as well. I love that kind of training aspect of it and working with the stunt team and it's, it's, yeah, it's a kind of a, a fun day at work usually. Was it, was it quite fun as well, kind of working with the stunt team, but specifically how would Dove go into this situation? Yeah. Because like you said, it's, you know, there's that, that reckless abandonment of not thinking about safety for herself. So she's able to be kind of throwing herself head first in quite literally. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of getting the balance right of me as like a, a keen actor <laughs> who's like ready to go and then also being like okay well what what's right for the character and I'd we have an amazing stunt team and um Helen O'D who's my stunt double for most of it is is brilliant and she's so um she's so observant and um you know she'll she'll bring up things that I'm doing in my performance that I didn't even know I was doing so that she can replicate it when needed and yeah they're they're a great team And in talking a little bit more about the relationship that she has with Gilbert, Will Forte's character, you know, I I love that it's kind of this space where they both start on either side and they both kind of creep a little bit towards the middle for each other of each other's personality types. And so when you were looking at what starts as that initial abrasive feeling of, you know, you're just so positive and optimistic and excited for everything and it's your worst traits to kind of her allowing herself to open up in that way a little bit, how far did you want her to travel and how did you find those parameters yeah, well, I think the the further we go and the more we we got to know each other was that we actually, even though they seem like they're on two opposite ends of a spectrum, they're they're actually at a similar place in their lives. They're both going through a professional and a personal crisis, and it's just kind of two different ways of handling it. Um, and I think I I think we all wanted them to get to a position at the end where there's a better understanding and um, appreciation of each other. And I think, yeah, there are certain moments that do that for us. I mean, there's the moment where after the kind of the head butt, uh, when she attacks um, uh, outside the pub for Gilbert and then they run and they're on the bridge and he's drunk and he reveals where he's at. And there's like, we have moments like that where they come together and kind of see each other a little bit. I think Dove hasn't allowed herself to be seen or see other people. Um, So 
yeah I think we wanted them to feel at the end that they've really gone through something together and are bonded whether they like it or not it also feels like a really big moment when it's the point where she feels comfortable enough to start opening up more about her mom and some of her childhood history and you know she talks about some of the things that she realized when she was older about who her mom was to her as a kid um and so kind of when you looked at that what did you think were the important things that needed to have happened in their relationship for her to trust him enough to start opening up in that way because it's so vulnerable for her it is it's really vulnerable thing for her to do I think again in that kind of opening up and that story that she tells Gilbert which is really revealing she's also she's also like a lot of that is sort of only new information to her too so I think it's it's she's she's kind of using it as a she's still working it out herself and she's still learning I think that's an effort to tell Gilbert why I am the way I am you know I think that that scene in the in the cell you know she she ends up saying because it's because I'm hungry like I'm hungry all the time just like my mom was um and it, it's I think it's a sharing I think it's nearly also a warning like I will do anything um so it's funny it's like it's a giving and a taking I think at the same time with with Dove um but yeah at that point they have they have gone through a lot together um so it's it was yeah it was easier to to play for sure and and with Emmy as well, kind of similarly, she gets more comfortable in, in trusting her, but it feels like it comes from a different place. It comes from Emmy being willing to stand toe to toe with yeah. her and not trying to people please her anymore and being willing to tell her to her face, like, I actually think you're a terrible person. And that actually garners more respect from Dove. Um, yeah. And so similarly, kind of how did you want the two of them to gradually shift their dynamic? Yeah, it was, it, that was really, that was really cool. It was really cool seeing Emmy played so gorgeously by Robin Cara um, kind of coming into her own and starting to um, starting to be braver and starting to name what she wants and getting it. Um, there's a, such a, just a gorgeous arc for, for Robin. Um, and yeah, Dove had to see that, that kind of uh, that hunger that she talks about. She had to see it in her, until she could before she could kind of respect her or, or or understand her I just don't think she she didn't understand her it wasn't her type of person she had to see that and realize okay maybe I you know I judged I had my mis- my preconceptions um I underestimated you and yeah I think once she starts seeing that in in Emmy then she realizes, okay, there's, you know, there's a bit of a bite to this girl and I can work with her. <laughs> and there's, there's something so sweet about in that final episode when she thinks that Gilbert's been blown up in the bomb that just went off and she actually starts crying. But I love the dove tactic of even when they see her crying, she's still like, no, no, no. I thought I lost my sunglasses. And he's like, but that was about me. Right. And she's like, no, no, no. I just really like my sunglasses. So she's still not going to say the thing out loud, but they both know exactly what's happening. And even just the touch point where like you lay your head on his shoulder kind of says it all. And I was interested in like the details that were in the script and then how you and Will also just like added those extra layers and textures together. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the head on the shoulder was in the script I'm pretty sure it was or maybe it was like a last minute put your head on his shoulder (laughs) like somewhere from the gods um I can't remember but I do remember that that was like quite near the end of our shoot so like loads of that emotion is 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 real we're like we've worked together for six months and um we've all become really close and and um but yeah, no, it was really nice to see Dove in a more vulnerable space, even though she's making a pathetic attempt at at lying and saying that's not what it is. But it's, I think it's lovely and I hope it's quite satisfying as viewers to kind of see that shift in her. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that's a, that was a lovely scene to shoot. And there's so much growth in terms of the relationship that she has to her mom and the fact that she spent her whole life thinking 
she was never enough for her mom and she kind of realizes it was actually never about her all along yeah. that she was she wasn't the part of the equation that was the issue um and so where did you want to kind of carry that because it's such an internal journey that she's going on as well so I think there's a lot of challenges and intricacies in how to express that through a character like her when it's not that she's necessarily diatribing to someone at the pub and talking to everyone about her feelings yeah well I mean it's really it's really interesting to kind of see what happens to a person when everything that they have held as true is is removed the rug is totally pulled out from underneath them and they have to then question everything everything is questioned anything that all their kind of everything they've sort of hung their hat on all their sort of touch points all their pillars of self are just smashed in front of them and it's looking at that kind of rebuilding and what's what I loved then about Dove and about the ending is that then she goes back to put the work in she goes back to the convent where you know the scene of the crime essentially and says I want to learn I want to know what happened I want to learn about you guys and um and that's really I think that's really really uh really admirable in in a, in Dove to to see that kind of humility of being uh, you know that mea culpa I got it wrong let's um let's learn yeah and I think it's it's such a great example of how it feels like she really learns and understands how to take accountability for herself in the world Mm -hmm. and even just that recognition of I always felt like I was alone because other people didn't want to get close to me but actually I'm the one that's created this entire wall around me where nobody can get close to me. Um, and so when you thought about how do I want to open her up a little bit at the end for this, this world of a new possibility for her, how did you land on where that was going to land and what it was going to look like for her? Well, step one, take the sunglasses off. <laughs> 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 but, but, but really in a serious way, we, you know, we did do a lot of chats with um, costume and makeup and what, what Dove looks like when, you know, when she isn't, when when pushing people away isn't the most important part of her morning routine. Um, and so you do see her soften um, in terms of costume. You see even like a few buttons at the <laughs> becoming undone, showing a bit more skin in a slightly more vulnerable, open way. The hair starts to kind of come down a bit. So in a, as a physical, as like a picture, um, you see her kind of soften and change a bit. I think you see her listening a lot more. Um, there's less, uh, there's less bite. She's willing to um, hear Emmy and Gilbert, which up until up until quite late in the series, she wasn't really, she didn't really care. She didn't even want to be on the same plan as them, the same itinerary as them. So, um, yeah, I think there are, you, you kind of see her gradually breaking down and, and, and not being afraid to kind of show those emotions either. Um, certainly the, the mushrooms and the, the alcohol help, but, um, but she does, she, she, she kind of, again, uh, Gilbert and Emmy are kind of the witnesses to, to a lot of that sort of emotional offloading that we see I I love those details and and everything that you've kind of interwoven in into her and I think going back to what you said at the beginning that idea of you know there's there's a stoicness to her but you still kind of let the audience in at every step and and you did it so well so congratulations on an amazing series and thank you so much thank you so much that's very kind